<laughs> Bye. Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a very personal video. You can probably tell by the title that it has to do with fertility or infertility. I tried to do this video on a day where I'm not as emotional, so like not around my period or not around ovulating or gosh, I just feel like these days, any day is an emotional day. But um, yeah, so I tried, sorry guys. <sighs> Gonna be some tears. I will try to keep it to a minimum. So today is December 17th, 2018, and it has been almost a year since Luca and I have been trying to conceive. And I just want to preface this by saying I never thought in a million years that I would be here. I am one of seven children. My mom had all of us naturally and she was clearly fertile myrtle. And so my whole life I've always dreamt of having kids and for when that day came and I always just thought like, oh, my mom popped us out, no problem. It should be about the same for me. So I never thought that I would be struggling um, with conceiving. It's been a really hard 2018. For those of you that know me, um, I'm a personal trainer, I'm a fitness professional, I lead a very healthy lifestyle, but also a very balanced lifestyle. I don't believe in going to extremes. I don't beat my body into the ground at the gym. I work out to feel strong and healthy. I don't do hours of cardio. I eat very balanced. I don't cut out carbs. I don't cut out fats. I eat enough. I am always sure that I'm eating enough calories. It's very rare that I'm trying to stay under a calorie limit. I'm always trying to reach my calorie goal to be sure that I'm properly fueling my body. For the most part, I am a very healthy person. I think a lot of people stereotype those with fertility issues as though they're unhealthy. Working out and eating healthy absolutely does increase your chances of conceiving, but it's not everything. And so when I realized that this was actually starting to become a struggle, I knew I wanted to talk about it. Those of you that know me know that I am very open. I do not hide from my struggles. If I can share my struggles and help even one woman out there know that she's not alone, then I wanna do that because my number one goal in anything I do, whether it's fitness or personal things, is for people to know that they're not alone in their struggles and that happier times do lie ahead. I haven't decided if I'm gonna release this once we've conceived or maybe so many more months are gonna pass that I'm like, I can't keep it in anymore. We're still struggling. So I don't really know where we're gonna be at, but I wanted to share my story in hopes that it helps someone. So I am just going to start at the beginning and I'm gonna try to recount the main details from the beginning of our TTC journey. There's gonna be a lot of acronyms. I'll put them up like on the screen for you. For those of you that have not yet been on this journey, there is so much to learn it still blows my mind how many things I've learned in such a short amount of time that my entire life I had no idea about, about my own body. <laughs> so I went off birth control November 2017. It was my first time being off birth control since I started birth control when I was 17. So 12 years that I was on birth control straight. I read reports that for some people, that first month that you're off birth control is your most fertile time. For others, it takes a year plus for those hormones to completely get out of your system. December 2017, we didn't officially start trying, to be honest with you guys. Oh, by the way, so there's gonna be a lot of talk about very private, personal things. If there's one thing that you learn, when you are trying to conceive is that it is not sexy. It is not hot. It is not what you think it would be. It is actually very stressful, robotic, organized, and just not what you think it would be, which definitely has added a lot of stress for both me and Luca. So as I was saying, December 2017, it was actually the month that we launched the Fit Body app, or it was called Body Love at that point in time. It's now called the Fit Body app. So that month was like, nada. We were so busy, 
so stressed. So we don't really count that month. January 2018 was like the first month that we started trying and learning about all of this ovulation stuff. I actually had a 35 day cycle that month, which for me, honestly, girls, that extra week, I was like, oh, I don't have my period, I'm pregnant. Like completely, I was convinced. No, I was not pregnant. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. There definitely were multiple times that I thought I was pregnant. You guys, I was so convinced that I was pregnant. I bought little things off of like Etsy of like, baby do March, 2019. Like baby do June, 2019. I even have one from this last month. So there were months that I definitely was so uber convinced. And the reason why is because I was symptom spotting. So if you aren't familiar with that, it is where you are paying attention to every little tiny thing that is going on in your body um, after you ovulate. So the time before you ovulate is called the follicular phase. The time after you ovulate is called the luteal phase. And the luteal phase is when, you know, after you ovulate, so implantation, fertilization, and becoming pregnant happens and you notice little things that are signs that you could or could not be pregnant also with your boobs and so I, I hope I hope there are no guys watching this if you are I hope this is very educational for you my husband also has been into in the whole nitty-gritty of all the details of the luteal phase and all that jazz when you learn to symptom spot I will say I drove myself nuts googling anything and everything you will find for any symptom you have you'll find 50 women saying that was my pregnancy sign that was my pregnancy sign and then 50 women who said that was right before my period I had that same symptom so as you go on through the months and you really get to know your cycle and you learn symptom spotting and patterns you learn what is normal for you and what is not and so that is really the main key that a sign for you, whether you're pregnant or not, has nothing to do with anyone else. It's mainly what's different for you. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> my symptoms were different every single month because I don't know if it was my hormones regulating from the birth control or what, but my symptoms were always different. So every month I was like, oh, this is different. I'm pregnant. Nope, got my period. Next month, oh, this is different. I'm pregnant, nope. So went the cycle pretty much this entire year. And in the beginning, honestly, I didn't get upset because I felt like before, especially six months, I had no right to get upset because there are couples that it takes one, two years to conceive. So I can't complain if I didn't get pregnant in six months. But I would say, after the six months is when it started to really get to me when I would get my period and realize that I wasn't pregnant. It was hard because Luca was so in it with me. He was always aware of when I was ovulating, what DPO, that's days post ovulation, I was, how that connects to implantation and fertilization. And it was hard because he was on that roller coaster with me. It was good because, of course, we have each other to have that support, but it was also hard because I had to see his reaction. Throughout the year, I got checked up. I would say after like four months, I went to my OB and he said that everything looked perfect. Um, I've been told that many times that I have a perfect uterus. <laughs> whatever that means <laughs> and Luca also got checked out his count was totally fine and then in September this is unrelated to like me personally trying to conceive but something that happened that was really upsetting is that my OB passed away suddenly no matter who the person is it's always sad when someone passes away but he was a very special doctor to me because he was Italian he was from Rome and he moved here like 20, 30 years ago, so he's lived here for a really long time. But he and Luca were born in the same hospital. And I asked one of the nurses if he does deliveries, and they said yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. He's from Rome, he speaks Italian, he can deliver our babies and speak to Luca's family, because Luca's family only speaks Italian. And so I was like, what are the chances? And so I always kind of fantasized about 
having him deliver our babies, him being able to communicate to Luca's family, and just allowing them to have that experience of communicating with the doctor that delivers their grandchildren. And so when I got the phone call that he passed away, actually was when Luca and I got back to the US from our trip to Italy, and I got a voicemail and I was shocked. Aside from my dream of having him deliver our babies he was an amazing doctor an amazing ob and you ladies know <laughs> how hard it is to find an ob that you trust and are comfortable with and so it was just devastating on all fronts and i had to find a new ob and this was month nine so it was getting kind of a bit into our journey of trying to conceive and so i knew that Fertility treatments were possibly around the corner. Fast forward to last month and we got a consultation at SCRC, it's Southern California Reproductive Center. That's where I got a referral from my doctor and we met with Dr. Alexander and I did an ultrasound that day and we also did some blood work to test my initial levels and everything looked great. Honestly, she was raving about, oh my gosh, you have so many eggs. I guess this is where it's called unexplained infertility. So the day of my consultation was one DPO. It was one day past ovulation. And so I still had a chance to be pregnant that month. The crazy thing is, guys, is like I mentioned about symptom spotting and you learn that there are certain things that happen to your body when it, it is pregnant in the, those very early stages. And one of them supposedly is about pinching and like tugging and pulling below your belly button. So it's like cramps, but it's not that dull achy feeling like you get when it's your period. It's more like sharp poking, prodding, tugging, pulling. And sure, there this absolutely can be a sign of your actual period, but for the most part, they say that that's a sign of implantation. And I had those poking and prodding and tugging feelings at 9 DPO, which is around when they say implantation would occur. And then the next day, my boobs got so heavy and sore. You guys, it hurt to not wear a bra. It felt like my chest muscles were sore and so heavy. And I was like, oh, I'm pregnant. Like this is 100% I'm pregnant. And then 12 DPO, those symptoms went away. And then I got my period two days later. From the consultation appointment, they said I would need to come in in those first days of my period to get blood work taken, to check my levels, and really to start treatment. And so I did go in on CD2, which is cycle day two. And I got blood work taken, another ultrasound, and pretty much started um, planning for an IUI. So an IUI is an intrauterine insemination. It is very different from IVF, in vitro fertilization. So an IUI is kind of like the first steps. And then if you are unsuccessful with IUI after a certain number of cycles, then that's when you would be a candidate for IVF. So we did opt to do an IUI. A part of me also just really wants to keep trying naturally, but the other part of me is scared that it's gonna be another six months or another year, and then we're gonna be right back at the same decision where we want to do an IUI or eventually IVF. I did get a call from my doctor, um, Dr. Alexander, about my hormones and my blood work and was saying how everything looked great. And I was like, okay, like there's really no known reason. Um, let's just go ahead and do the IUI anyways. And I did tell her on that call about how I really was convinced that I was pregnant and the things about the poking and the prodding and about my boobs being so sore and specifically muscle soreness. And her response was, oh, it sounds like your body is really trying to get pregnant. You might just have low progesterone. And progesterone is a hormone that your body releases in your luteal phase. So in your luteal phase, your progesterone levels increase. If you are pregnant, then they continue to increase. But if you're not pregnant, then they drop in the follicular phase, and then they start increasing again after ovulation in that luteal phase. So obviously you need progesterone in order to get pregnant. And she seemed to think that maybe I just have low progesterone. And she told me to take selenium 
or to eat three Brazil nuts a day. And it is very, very important for anyone listening that if you eat Brazil nuts, you do not exceed three a day. They actually have an upper limit because of a level of toxicity because um, when they grow, their roots go really, really deep down into the ground and they have higher radiation exposure and levels because of that. So three Brazil nuts a day. I opted to eat the Brazil nuts over taking a selenium supplement. So that was the first call I got from her. The second call I got was a few days later and she's like, hey Anna, we got more blood work back and your AMH levels are lower than expected. My AMH was at a 0.7 and they want it to be at a 1.4. So they did recommend for me to come back another day to test it a second time, just to be sure that that day where it was a 0.7 wasn't like just, you know, something going on that day. After she told me that my AMH was really low, she said that I need to be eating a Mediterranean diet. So more fish, more legumes, uh, seeds, nuts, avocado. I've been told multiple times I need to eat avocado and I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of fish either, but I, I can definitely stomach it on a regular basis. And then especially for a fertility diet, I am absolutely okay with eating all the fish that I need. And she also said to focus on getting a lot of fruits and veggies. And she said that I need to reduce stress. So this is kind of the main focus I think of my fertility journey so far is that this entire year of 2018 has been my most stressful year to date. I normally am really good under stress. I do my best to work normally when I am under stress. I have not had it easy. I've had to support myself financially from a young age, support myself mentally and emotionally from an even younger age. And this year has just been a completely different experience from what I'm used to. And apparently my stress is getting the best of me and I'm not surprised. I'm a little let down by it because I feel like I should be able to handle this, but it's, just something that I've never experienced before. And I think it's just been really hard on me and Luca. And I'm worried about Luca in this regard. And then that makes me stress and worry even more. And then he stresses and worries even more. And so it's just, it's been a really big cycle. My doctor told me that she wants me to do acupuncture and just reduce stress overall. So with that, I think I'm, just gonna overall try to reel things in a bit. My workouts, oh, I didn't even mention workouts. I was told that I need to take it easy on my workouts and you girls know that I normally do really high intensity workouts and it's been something that has weighed on me very heavily this entire year. There would be times in my luteal phase that I would be in a flywheel class and just killing it, heart rate super high through the roof and I think to myself, should I not be putting my body through this much physical stress when this is supposed to be the time period where implantation and fertilization should occur? And I had that little voice in my head. Then finally, one month, I was like, you know what? Yes, I'm gonna chill because no workout, no losing any amount of body fat is gonna be worth compromising my ability to conceive. Today is December 17th. It is day three of me preparing for the IUI. I have to take medicine. I'm taking letrozole, which is similar to Clomid. I also have to inject a hormone into my lower belly in a few days. That is called Ovidrel, and I'm a little scared. I don't like the idea of taking hormones. I just have to have faith that it will help us. And then in a few days, I have my first IUI. This is very new to me, which might also be why I'm a little bit more timid. I haven't really verbalized a lot of these things with anyone. Obviously Luca, my best friend, and a few other family members are aware. So I hope I got everything out <laughs> in an easy to understand way. And I also just wanna say that I'm really thankful for you guys, the fact that I can share this with you and um, I know you girls are an amazing group of incredibly supportive women and if you have had trouble conceiving my heart goes out to you and I am here for you and I hope that this is just the beginning of us being able to bring more awareness to it um, so that women don't feel like they're broken or like something is wrong with them and hopefully we can give them some hope that their day is coming. If you have any questions don't hesitate to ask Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you guys next time.